Welcome back to He Made Me Watch. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Eric. Eric and I each made us watch, made each other watch something. Yeah. Uh, Eric made me watch Enter the Dragon. And I made Eric watch its parody, Balls of Fury. And this movie is much better than this movie, <laughs> naturally, but that goes without saying. Let's start with uh, uh, Enter the Dragon yeah, by saying... The original. Neither of us knows... Right, the original, and, and then this bizarre Christopher uh, Walken remake. Um, we don't know why it's called that or what the title means. We, we also no we also recently watched um, Mortal Kombat, which is this movie again. Yes, which I meant to talk about, but we it was it was weeks back and we took a hiatus from the omnibus, and I didn't figure with the like six movies we had to do for how we cap has like movie better, nights but... on on Monday and right. one day he was just like, "What should I play?" I was like, "Mortal Kombat." Yeah, and then we all watched Mortal Kombat. Because a lot of people hadn't seen Mortal Kombat. Uh, it's, it's, it's just this movie. Um, I And and the guy who's like the announcer guy in Mortal Kombat is in Balls of Fury and gets killed kill off in the first act. Yep. Um, I think another dragon is Bruce Lee. He has other movies that have dragon the title. I think his style might be dragon something. Oh. So it might For be... a minute, I thought you were trying to remember the man's name. Like, yes, no, it's Bruce Lee. No, no, Eric. no, I think the title might be... The dragon is, is Bruce Lee. Yeah, because right. this is the major introduction for American Heights, and then he dies. But like this is this is this is everyone's introduction to, to, to Bruce Lee for the most part in, in America, at least in the mainstream audience. Um, and this it's, is what's a pretty darn powerful introduction, man. And this is um, what kicks off and starts the kung fu craze of the seventies. Yep. Yeah, that's seventy three. So it's yep. early in the seventies, so there's plenty of time for it to get popular. Yep, yep. Uh Shang Chi and Iron Fist both exist because of this movie. I, I understand uh why that's held up as a classic film, why everybody loves Bruce Lee. Uh I, I don't understand why he is as hyper violent and okay with killing people as he is. Uh <laughs> but it's not a realistic film and I don't think it needs to be. Yeah. Um, it's it's mostly there to show to showcase those martial arts skills, of course. Mm -hmm. Um but it's a decent revenge thriller. Yeah, as and far as kind the story of a goes, spy thriller. right? It's got that. De yeah, I we we were talking about while we were watching it, um, it, how weirdly much in common it has with 007. Yeah, well, and uh, the following year or two years after this, Man of the Golden Gun comes out and it pulls a lot from this movie. Interesting, um, because that was James Bond in his like trend phase. So like, uh, he does uh, so like like Live and Let Die is he's a black exploitation movie, and then kind of does a kung fu kind of like they just shove it in the middle of that movie. Like the rest of the movie isn't really that, but. Uh, no, it's, um, it's, it is the, like, I don't think you can, you can underestimate the importance and influence of End of the Dragon. It is the martial arts tournament movie. Um, anime doesn't exist like it does without this movie. And I wonder if, in, in live action, it ever really technically gets any better than this. Um, I'm not sure. Um. I mean, I've not seen a lot of these kinds of movies. I mean. But. I guess I say that to say it was remarkably watchable. Yeah. I expected this to be an important film canon kind of movie that I would go, okay, I get the importance, but I expected to be honestly kind of bored with it. I wasn't. It's paced really well. No, it's, it's, it's in the really 70s. Short. It's not it's paced. Really like, short. It's really short. Like a 70s movie, it's really, it's really short. Um, it's, it's not an American 70s movie, so that's fair. But it doesn't, no, it is an American 70s movie. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course. You told me yeah. that. That, like, we actually make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he like co -fin I, th I think China like co-finances or something. But like, it, it's an American-made movie. It's American director, maybe British director. It's English director. Well, that makes it really surprising that it's paced the way it is. Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. Because seventies movies take their time. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like a seventies movie. It you understand in watching this, especially if you watch films from the seventies, like what an insane bolt this must have been. Oh yeah. Um, just like this must have felt like. I'm trying to think of a better example, but this must have felt like Star Trek 09 or something. Like it's just it's so rapidly paced for this time period. Yeah. Not now. I mean, you go back to it now, and it feels like a normal, reasonably paced movie. But yeah. like back then, it must have felt like an adrenaline yeah. rush. You know. And it still kind of feels like that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Um, um, it's it, it's a really energetic film. Um, I don't think we take too long to get to the island. Um, no. Hmm. Uh, like it's just it, it, no, and well, the scenes before that are still entertaining. You yeah. know, I mean, even the exposition stuff, even when like they're like explaining to him what the mission is and all that, like it has fun with itself. It's got plenty of levity. Like, yeah, well, well, do, well there's, there's that great scene that I'm surprised hasn't been ripped off more, where uh, where they're explaining to uh, to Bruce Lee like like they used to go infiltrate and go 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 like get this information and and all of this. And he's like, 
Why don't you just shoot him? Why don't you just bring a gun? Pow! And they're like, well, you're not allowed to have weapons there. That's why we need you. You yeah. need a living weapon. Yeah, yeah. Like, Shang-Chi. Yeah. Isn't it the living weapon? No. No, no. Uh, I I Iron Fist is the living weapon. Iron Fist is the living weapon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Shang-Chi is Master of Kung Fu. That's right. Um... But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a great cast. Uh, this is the this is the introduction of Jim Kelly, um, who is uh, I knew the names when we watched it. Um, I I don't remember Jim Kelly's character's name is. It's, it's Jim Kelly. Uh, I know Bruce Lee's character's name. It's Lee. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I can remember that. I think he's Martin's. Is Jim Kelly? J Jim Kelly's the one that dies. He's great. Um, he has he 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 goes on to do some of his own stuff. Kind of like kung fu black exploitation films. He has one called Black Belt Jones. I want to see. I thought he had a lot of screen presence. I really liked him in this movie. He probably has the most famous line in the whole movie, which is the "Man, you come right out of a comic book." <laughs> oh yeah. Um, which is what you said like moments before. Yeah. You're like, oh, he's just full super villain. <laughs> That's right. Um, and then uh, I forget who the other guy is. Uh, I did find out. I looked into this. Well, it's fun that we watched this in close proximity with Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Mortal Kombat also takes a bunch from this. Especially yeah. Yeah. The, way the tournament yeah. works. And, yeah. Um, I I cannot remember what 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 the third guy's name is, but I I, I looked into this. So in the script, uh, Jim Kelly's character is the one that lives, and the other guy is the one that dies. Uh, but that guy was just a bigger he was, he was just a bigger star. So he was like, well, if I'm gonna be in this, I don't want to die. Because it looks like a token black guy death. Like it yeah. looks like you you have one black guy, he has to die. Yeah. No. Apparently, and, apparently that was just uh, uh, the other guy whose name I can't remember. Um. Uh. He uh. He just wanted. And he was, he was like, well, I'm, I'm 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 a bigger star. I don't know if that's even a trope yet. By 73. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, but nice to know that that wasn't on purpose or anything, you know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't sound like it had anything to do with this race, but... The thing... No, no. Um, the thing that uh, I think is most astounding or or surprising about this movie is that it is a 70s film, and so, boy, does it have a downer ending. Mm -hmm. It's just a real... Like, so, so ah, uh, man, I wish I could, I could remember that guy's name, but the other guy in the movie... Um, uh, Jim Kelly, Shinkan. The box He's also does not care. He's not even listed on the back. <laughs> oh, John Saxon. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So it's Bruce Lee, John Saxon, and then uh, the, uh, 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 either a girl or the bad guy. Uh, John Saxon, yes, of course, John Saxon. Uh, John Saxon, the dad in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, not doing kung fu, but apparently he is like a like a martial artist guy. Oh, like he didn't, he didn't just like take lessons for this movie. Like he is he is known as a martial artist. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, Jim Kelly, so. There's there's all these prostitutes um, on the island, and uh, and uh, Jim Kelly scene is great is great. But uh, John Saxon picks the mistress. Uh, like immediately he yeah. goes on the island. He's like he's like I forgot about that. he's like that's a woman. She can show you things about yourself. And then he picks her, uh, and they're they're really nice together. There's a really nice scene. The the only scene with with nudity for like six seconds, which is why this movie's rated R. Yeah. Um, where she's just like walking on his back and like having fun together. Like they seem really good together. And then she just dies. And one of the last images you're left with in the movie is he looks over and it's just her corpse. That's um, very depressing. Yeah, yeah. I wish we still made movies like this. I wish we still made movies where it's like, it's a real fun movie. Oh, man. Because um, yeah, a lot of bands make music like that. Why can't we make movies like that, right? Yeah. Where you have like a really peppy... I mean, I talk about this all the time with the Amity Giants. You have a really peppy, happy melody... But if you're listening to the lyrics, it's like, oh, God, this is horrifying, right? Like, yeah. why do we make more movies like that? Um, Sometimes that, I mean, you don't want it to feel like, at the end of the day, it doesn't actually come together, and, it, and it's atonal, and it doesn't know what the tone is. Mm -hmm. But those things can can, can blend, you know? Uh, the, the other thing that I think is really impressive and holds up completely about this movie is all of the martial arts. None of the fight scenes are dull. They, they, they're, oh, of course, they're all, yeah. like, they're like, like those, those, those fight scenes hold up completely. Who like, wouldn't be remembered the yeah, way it is? Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I, I mean, I mean, if it was the first time you ever saw it, I mean, we get bigger. Maybe there would be the token scenes, but then yeah. some of it... You're like, oh, 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 there's, there's the one fight everybody knows. Um, also, also, at first, I'm aware of a, a glass hallway, uh, the mirror hallway. Um, right, yeah. Yeah, uh, which which is also very famous. Uh, but no, it's it's a great movie. And it, and it looks great. I never see a camera, and that's Yeah, great. yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's it, it's that, a dragon. That fight with, uh, with, with Bruce Lee and the bad guy at the end is really over the top. Well, and and the and it's and, wild, and 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 the evil guy that Bruce and, Lee has to kill, and also Bruce Lee does not get out unscathed. Like he takes some shots, right? And yeah. Like, oh yeah. No, he's, he's got the big, he he's got the big market right. buses. Yeah. Because the guy's because that guy's got a claw arm. <laughs> uh, but, but 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 the fight with uh, with the one bad guy, which happens way earlier than you would think it would, uh, 
the like heavy, um, the guy that killed uh, Bruce Lee's sister or was involved in her death. That's a little confusing. Yeah. Um, but was it, but was involved with her death. That seems that fight seems great. It just keeps going. Like Bruce Lee just keeps winning, and the guy will not let it happen. I was confused about a couple of things. One was just the rules of the tournament and how often fights were actually happening. And so it would seem like we weren't actually like called out to go do a fight. It just kind of happens, and then oh, I guess we're doing a tournament again. And like that would happen. It's also the the best uh, like explanation for why an evil person would hold a martial arts tournament, which is he uses it for recruitment. Um, he brings the best fighters in the world, and then he's like, "Hey, you want you want a job?" That's uh, what the Foot Clan should do. Yeah, yeah. But then Ninja Turtles also would not exist without this movie. Of course, yeah. <laughs> well, well, and the whole Ninja Quaze probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all tied in together. I would. Yeah, I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. To some degree. Um, the uh, the other thing, and maybe I'm wrong about this. I wasn't sure when I said it to you, but I'll mention it. Mm -hmm. and we'll see if we get comments from people that really know this movie. Um, maybe I'll watch it again at some point. But. Um, it seemed like, all of a sudden, there were a bunch of people in a different colored gi that all show up to fight the bad guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just because... When, like, all of a sudden, there's, like, a good guy army. There just weren't enough guys to fight the bad guys, so now we suddenly have a good guy? I don't know what's going on there. They came out of nowhere. Uh, but, yeah, it's Iron Dragon. It's great. Yeah, naturally, it's excellent. <laughs> I'm feeling it, because duh. Uh, Balls Fury! Uh, I picked because this is a parody that I liked a lot when it came out. Of course, uh, I'd never seen it in The Dragon and didn't really appreciate or understand Kung Fu movies. Um, so I didn't enjoy this as a parody so much as just a straight-up crazy farce. Uh, just thought the idea of a martial arts tournament with ping-pong balls was hilarious. I like Christopher Walken. Um, the main guy in this was surprisingly not terrible. And, 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 uh, and I love him for fanboys. Yeah, what is that guy's name? What is that guy's name? He's a fantastic beast now. He's got Harry Potter money. Um, He's also great in Hannibal. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Dan Fogler. Yes, Dan Fogler. Uh, uh, yeah, he's, 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 he's one of Hannibal's patients. He's really good. This uh, does not hold up as well as I remember it. Uh, and, of course, this is not a movie that a lot of people like. It didn't get great ratings. I think it's like 20-something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, but you know, you, like, are. You, know, you like what you like. And uh, my wife and I saw this in the theater, and we both thought it was hysterical. And Sarah doesn't usually like comedies like this, so I was surprised that she liked it. She made me buy it. We had to pull out of the shrink wrap for this. We had forgotten to ever open it. Uh, What's funny is I've probably seen it more recently than you have, because I saw it on DVD. Yeah, once again, I made Eric watch this just because we had talked about that. And honestly, I had this in my stack forever. And I don't know why, because I knew you hadn't seen it. No, that, so, that was, I mean, that I was you a, had seen it. Yeah, no, that was the thing, like, going all the way back, where you're like, well, you see Balls of Fury? I was like, yeah, I saw that once on time. You're like, that counts. <laughs> I don't know why I did you that. I don't remember it. But whatever, we watched it anyway. Yeah. Um, so, how, how do you how do you feel about this movie? I mean, it's fun. Yeah. Um, I wish Dan Fogler got to do more movies like this. Uh, I thought you were going to say, I wish he got to do more in this movie, because... I mean... Yeah. I mean, there are questions I have that, like, you shouldn't <laughs> ask in yeah. a film like this, but, like... He's supposed to be, like, amazing at ping pong, but he sucks, and so they spend the time training him? Why don't they just go get another ping pong player? But it's weird because... And it's also weird because we see him playing ping pong before that, and he's amazing! He's doing, like, four ping yeah, pongs at once! I don't think the issue is that he sucks. Guy. I think the issue is that he's got anxiety and he's nervous. And so if he goes up against another player, he's just not playing well. And okay. so they're, they're training him to get his gumption back. Sure. I, I feel like he could have done it in other ways than like actually like he knows how to play ping pong, but he never Did felt he special. Ever have an, he never felt he like he was great. Then. No, that's right. Did, and also, and again, outside uh, of these ways, I'm with you. Show. Are these questions we should really ask? The, to yeah. be fair, this movie is not really trying to be a dramatic film. Like all the dramatic stuff is obviously just placeholder and it, like like placeholder. It's cookie cutter story so that you can get the, yeah. the comedic scenes. Yeah. Um, so I think it's pretending like it's dramatic before it's actually trying to be dramatic. I don't think there's any question about that. Mm -hmm. So these questions are not fair, but I did find myself wondering uh, why he and the girl fell in love so fast, especially because immediately it was obvious that he was was into her and she's and, and she and the grandfather are both like 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 leave me alone and, and I never get exactly what she sees in him and then it's a light switch and it's like five more minutes after that yeah no it felt like the most uh, the most typical movie tropey thing of the whole thing yep is that well there has to be a love interest and it's not even until the, it's not even the end of the film that they finally get, they, they don't even do that trope where it's like oh well, you won the tournament so now I love you like yeah. they already had it for no reason yep yep 
Uh, I, I mean, it's funny. Chris Walken's good. Yeah, he's I mean, hysterical. The, I mean, if I have to flip it, I'm, I, yeah, I, I, same I'd, here. I'd watch it again. That's not point. Take the effort to actually reach over there and yeah. do that, but me too. Um, <laughs> That'd be weird if it's still red. funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, well, it's just you know, your signs over there, but you didn't use your signs, so oh, that's right. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, but I, I think <laughs> I think the funniest contrivance in the whole movie, uh, and this is intentional and it's great, is uh, we have to have. A big action scene out on a bridge. Yes, and we, because you and I both had this. We're like, I remember this movie on the other bridge. By the way, like, how far do you get there? Because it's with ping pong. <laughs> so they have a ping pong table uh, with like electro shock in it. Yeah, you have like this vest you, you have this to wear, vest, and you can't and take it off. If you miss, it shocks you, and it shocks you like really hard, and you're in, and it's like three shocks, and you're dead. Mm. And because um, it's like a it's like a fighting game where it's like somehow the voltage it knows that no matter who's wearing it, three shocks kills you. Yeah, yep. it's really funny. Yeah, we should use that for uh, capital punishment. I mean, it's really effective. <laughs> and they're 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 playing ping pong, and then uh, suddenly he goes, "Oh, I forgot to tell." Which Vince was here. I can't do Christopher Walken. I forgot to tell you. Um, I I've uh, I changed it. I set it for uh, one bounce. It counts. So and so then they, they can bounce it off anything. So then they just get away from the ping pong table and they start going out into the um, into the courtyard. That's hilarious. Well, what I think is what I think is even funnier than the one bounce of that it counts thing is uh, is uh, the 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 main guy like does this thing like he like breaks something and he says like okay well we're just gonna leave now. And he's like and and Chris Rock is just like well unfortunately the vests don't know that we've quit. <laughs> And so, so gonna have to keep doing it. Thinks we're still playing, <laughs> and so you have to, and so they have to keep playing. Um, no, I think you. The worst part about about this movie, I think, is I don't know if it's ever funnier than Dan Foger just on stage doing the doing the ping pong, and he's just <laughs> where he's doing like six at once, and he's got this expression like, yeah, but and then stuff. everyone just and just no one cares. No, no one's impressed. It's really it. impressive. It's funny, but. I, like I think, Christopher Walken, uh, a lot of his stuff is as funny or funnier than that. Um, Where's the Chinese? He's just killing. He, he, yeah, he's just killing people willy nilly. Is really funny. Um, I personally, I mean, I know this kind of thing bothers some people, so I mean, I want to be respectful. But I think it's really funny that they just cast Christopher Walken in yeah. a role that clearly should be, you know, an, an, an old Asian guy. Yeah, it, they know how ridiculous it is. Yeah, no, that's why. That's why it's funny. Um, I was found out that the, 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 the chick that uh, works for him, uh, she's on Archer, and I I never really seen her like she just plays herself on Archer like she's just she's just a big black chick that's real scary uh, but also like kind of attractive, um, and I never knew I was like oh that's, that's just weird. who you, you don't are. You see that with a cartoon to a live action? Yeah, I was that's like oh that's weird. just that's just who you are. Um, that was surprising because I didn't know who she was. Uh, when I was watching the movie, I looked it up. I was like, "Oh, she's she's she's, she's Lana from Archer." Uh, I don't think we ever because we had this question. I don't think we ever figured out why they couldn't just send the girl. Yeah, who was? Yes, well, was because really ping pong. Be, because because he would know who she is. Right, but then it was like, okay, but the, but like, isn't it obvious from who's there, who you're with? Cause Yo, yeah, because he's the old man. Yeah, because he's there with the old man. Yeah, I don't know why. They so I don't get that because because yeah. that, that's what I said. I was like, oh well, it can't be her because, uh, because then they then they know that he was involved, but then he goes. Yeah, so I don't really understand. And he's that, funny. He's always funny. Yeah, and he's always in these kinds of things. And yeah. He's in uh, he's in Kung Fu Panda, and I found that one. I found that he's like he was gonna like direct a movie at some point. It's a couple of years ago. I, I never followed up on that. But I was wow. like, looking at his, I was like, oh, he's directing a movie at like. A thousand years old. Thousand year old. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, because he's always been old. Uh, we're out of time, but those yeah. are the movies that we made each other watch. We yeah. thought we'd talk a little bit about them. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. Sure, appreciate it. We're gonna move on now with the omnibus to uh, license to review, and Eric is gonna talk about uh, one of his least favorite 007 movies, Diamonds Are Forever. So look forward to that. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We sure appreciate it. Uh, if you're watching on the playlist, just let it roll, and you can listen to Eric. Uh, Malign <laughs> some much as well. I'm yeah. Captain Logan! I'm, I'm Eric. I'm, I'm Captain Logan. <laughs> no, you're not. No! I'm Captain Logan! We'll see you next time. Bye.